welcome to First Friday. This is Suzanne Zarr, and I'm looking forward to our third installation of a virtual First Friday opening. I'm very excited to have with me artist Warren Dykeman, who is currently exhibiting in our SC Gallery on Mercer Island, and Donna Holloway, who is the owner of Studio E. And I thought I would just kick it off with you, Donna. Maybe you could tell us a little bit more about Studio E and what it is that we have collaborated on specifically in the SE Gallery, which sure. Great, thank you, um, and thanks for having us today. Um, yeah, yeah uh, Studio E opened in um, 2014 somewhat casually and has, have, um, has evolved into, um, you know, the gallery in Georgetown, neighborhood of Seattle, and we have had probably over 50 exhibitions since then. Every four to six weeks we rotate, um, and Warren is one of the regularly exhibiting artists at Studio E. When we were able to um, meet and see your space, it just seems that it would be perfect to be able to show a few different, um, a few works from several different periods in Dykeman's past. Yeah, yeah, and, and we are showing, um, for lack of maybe a better word, but three series or collections um, and and they're there you could see the thread of creativity through them but they're each very very unique and um, Warren why don't you tell us a little bit more about um, how you got into art because I, I think in, in uh, otherwise you've, you've been involved more in graphic design is that correct yeah um, so kind of the commercial side and then um, realized as I got into you know um, uh, working for design firms and in-house design departments that I um, I needed that outlet, you know, something that was not uh, controlled by someone else. Um, a lot of times you'll, or most of the time, most all the time, you'll do designs that are, um, you lose control of, uh, of, you know, you lose ownership of it really. And you have to do things that you wouldn't um, ordinarily do. And so I'd go home and break out the sumi ink and um, just do these paintings with sumi ink on paper. And um, so that's kind of how it, how it started. And then from there, um, some of those pieces, I, I got some interest in some smaller galleries and that kind of thing. And so that was kind of um, the start of it. And how did you two connect? What, 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 at what point in your career did, um, or have you always been friends or what's the history? When I, when I first started the gallery, Warren was one of the artists whose work I had admired. And I had this idea that there would be a grouping of artists whose work, there are a number of artists in Seattle who sort of do like an informal call and respond. They communicate with each other and share ideas and materials. And I, I thought that would be something to, um, to sort of showcase in the gallery. And so I always enjoyed uh, showing Warren's work and including that with these other artists. So tell us a little bit about your your process, Warren. How how do you, what inspires you and how has your work evolved? You've been doing it for quite a while. Tell us a little bit more about your process. Yeah, it's kind of, um, I have, um, you know, kind of a vocabulary of things, objects that I reuse and repurpose. And um, there's a lot of, uh, sometimes it's just a painting or sometimes it's something that's cut out of paper and, and use collage. So I collage my own paintings and drawings. A lot of times I'll look and I'll see an older painting that I've done. So I use my older work that I've forgotten about as the references for to use again. So I keep trying to add new things and then pull old things and in the mix and that kind of thing. And I think over time I just keep getting uh, a little, uh, a little better each each time or each year. It gets a little better at, at composing them together. A lot of times I'll go upstairs, so I've got upstairs where I work in my living area, and then I downstairs in the studio. So a lot of times I'm down there working a lot, and that's, other times I just stay upstairs and then just make pieces. I don't know how they're going to fit, but then that's um, kind of how it, it goes for me. So I try to just keep it loose like that. You know, what, I, what I've what i noticed about 
your art is that um, it, it speaks to my own left brain, right brain battle, <laughs> you know, where there's something that's more um, sort of intuitive and, and then another aspect of it that's a little more logical. Um, and they, they seem to kind of dance together in your artwork somehow. And I've been curious about that, you know, in terms of how, if, if that's a conscious way of working or is, is that just what kind of happens? Well, it's, that's, that's a, uh, you know, I'm trying to merge those things. Um, so in a way, I want to I wanna be, you know, some of my favorite work is those combinations of uh, Basquiat and Warhol mm -hmm. when they would work on the same piece together. I just thought that was so great, the way that, that merged together, how that worked. And so I, I want there are certain things to be loose and, and expressive and then other things to be precision, like... For instance, like a typeface, where you'd have that high contrast contour of a of a letter form on a rail car, where it would be going by and you would see the um, the corporate uh, uh, graphics of the rail car, and then someone had done graffiti over that with spray paint, and um, so that merging of those things uh, was always it's always been really interesting, you know. Uh, wanting to to seem like two different people, you know, when I'm painting. Uh, it's but, so true. It's like there's an aspect of it that is in motion in your work, and other aspects that are very calculated and and almost static. I, I usually have a pattern where I I'll go through a doing work and then I'll freeze, and then it'll get loose again after I uh, stop for a few days, and then it'll start to process all over again and slowly get tighter and tighter. Um, like that, um, and so yeah. it'd, like, it'd be nice to be able to just do both on the fly, but it's, it, you know, it's, it's difficult. So how do you know when a piece is done? Um, it has the right rhythm, overall rhythm to it. I use that term a lot, rhythm, that, that a flow, like a flow to it, you know? The thing is, is that you, you, when you're looking at it right there, when you finish, when you think you finished it, um, your judgment of, of it is wrong like you whereas if you put it away and then you see it again in a while then you you have they're, they're changing all the time so over time now i've tried not to get too hung up on that i try to just think well i'll just go to the next thing and maybe it, uh, it's good my favorite thing is when it gets lost and then so then i'll find it and then then i'll see for for a few seconds i'll see it for i'll see it um Clearly. And Donna, how, what, what is, you know, your perspective as a curator, just watching the art that's flowing, you know, and, and the, the, the evolution of the work? I'm fortunate because I, um, we've had several solo shows in, together and then also um, many group shows. And then, of course, I've ha been privileged to be in Warren's studio and gone through the stacks of drawings and... Um, and work, so I, 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 I guess I've been able to spend a lot of time with this work and feel pretty familiar with it and, and can definitely, um, you know, see the evolution and the changes and the things that enter, you know, sort of enter and then the things that exit. Um, and it's always fun. Actually, just the other day I was working on something and I, uh, there were a few elements in his work that I, I had assumed were new because I hadn't seen them before, but I saw them in quite old pieces. So I think he, does do that, like goes through those older works and remembers or recalls and pulls those forms back into his vocabulary. So it's it's pretty fun to watch and, and um, you know, I feel pretty familiar with his practice and it's, it's, it's definitely an honor to be able to, you know, watch that. So the, there, a lot of your work has gotten a lot of attention in our gallery. There, you've got a, a, a Quite a following, I'd say. Um, the one piece that's kind of focal and centered um, on the wall right now, it's got an earthiness to it that um, takes it kind of into another realm. The way it's framed is, is absolutely gorgeous because the, the paper floats off of, it's almost shadow boxed in its frame. And so you can yeah. really see a, a, an interesting um, treatment to the paper itself. Sometimes I'll take some uh, paper and I'll and I'll mount it on a panel all flat and it's fine. But with the 
certain types of paper or certain pieces, I start liking that flow better than if it was tacked down like that. Yeah, I think some of my best work is left left off of a, you know, framed like that, yeah. So pretty. And then the other two pieces that are on either side, one with the watermelon and one with the Charlie Brown dress and the ice cream cones, they, they, they just, they, they play really well together, just all three of those pieces on the wall. I, I've been really enjoying living with them, you know, just having them in the gallery. I'm, I'm curious over um, why the watermelon? I think the watermelon was done separately and then it was collaged on there. Oh, really? Yeah, so it was after the, the figure. Sometimes I'll, I'll have um, films going on in the background and I'll get up and I'll see something on there and I'll put what I see on the, or make what I see and then put it on the, the piece. A curator described Warren as sort of just like absorbing all of these things from life, from TV, from movie, just from, and then sort of reiterating them on paper. But that, that watermelon piece was done um, at the same time, I, I think of it as her sister. There's another piece of a, a similar woman um, smoking a cigar, cigar. cigar. Yeah. And I'm glad that you enjoy living with that piece, the Untitled Migration. I, there was something when I met you and when I saw your space and a little bit of the work that you do, Specifically, I thought of that palette for you, <laughs> so I'm glad you're enjoying it. I mean, it's the artwork that that is the soul of the space. I mean, we work as architects, or architects and interior designers in creating the textures, and the, we look at the lighting and the movement through the space. But um, it's that layer of fine art that um, just completely changes what the environment and the vibe of the space is. I know our front art gallery is a com it has a completely different vibe with your artwork in it um as it as it did with um past exhibits and i'm sure you feel that way with with studio e in the space i mean it it, it makes all the difference it, it really yeah. does especially for those of us that um i think most humans are extremely affected by their environment but in particular people who are in the visual field i mean it it makes a huge difference. You know, I, I, I want to maybe shift the conversation a little bit and talk about our current affairs, if you don't mind. Um, we've got a wonderful campaign happening locally. We love MI.org, um, where um, local small businesses and organizations are reaching out, asking for support right now, because these are unprecedented times. And, um, and my, my, I'm putting my business out there with a, 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 an ask for, um, through a GoFundMe page, as a pastor, as a vehicle to help support our local art scene and artists in particular. I, I just wanted to ask, how are you guys doing? And, and you know, how, how's it been during the, these tough times? And what do we have to potentially look forward to once we're able to reopen? A lot of people have more time in their studios. They have more time to reflect, to slow down, to sort of reevaluate their practice. Um, so in general, I would say if you, I, I anticipate a lot of creativity and a lot of really wonderful art coming out of this time. The downside is many small businesses, you know, in a gallery, it, galleries were still not technically allowed to open. Um, so it's, it's a difficult time. There have been um, people who have reached out and have acquired pieces via, um, you know, email or um, calls. And I always um, take those as little like boats of support for the gallery. And I really appreciate that. But a lot of the artists, um, some Warren's fortunate in, in that he's able to continue to work. Some of the gallery artists are not; they're in fields where they can't, and um, and it's and it's it's pretty stressful. But they are definitely taking advantage of the extra studio time. You know, I have my I, I call it a sandbox. I've got my sandbox here, uh, playpen or whatever, and uh, yeah, it's 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 definitely different. But I I continue to I'm, I'm able to do my design work right here at home and then i go into the office and no one's there um it's not as it's <laughs> you know it's not as collaborative as it could be but um let me just do the best you can you know 
Yeah, I think I think、um, the one silver lining, in my opinion, is during such times. What do you see people doing, but sort of retreating into the creative world, right? Through literature and film and music, and there's a little self-reflection, and maybe they're creating. Themselves, and I'm hoping we come out of this with a fuller appreciation of the art world. And creativity is so important. The, it, I think it comes full circle to what you were describing earlier, Warren, which is that freedom. It's been wonderful learning about how you've worked and the process that you've engaged in, and how you've teamed up with Donna, who just is curating these incredible exhibits. Tell people where they can find more information on other artists that you're showing. Sure. Thank you so much.、Um, I, my website is studioegallery.net, and we have an Instagram, which is also studioegallery.、Um, and we actually we are、um, open. We'll be open by appointment.、Um, we have been open by the appointment, and、um, we have a show coming up in、um, in June that will be kind. It's it'll be only by reservation, and you'll have the entire gallery to yourself. And it's and we're actually、um, working with、um, Inform Interiors to bring seating in very comfortable, beautiful seating. And so the idea is to really, with this pandemic, people have a wealth of time and to really sit with the work, which is something that I have the pleasure of doing and you have the pleasure of doing, but not everyone does. So I love that. That is amazing. I hope you, I hope you come. I will make an appointment. And Warren, what's what's on the boards? What Are is there anything you want to kind of preview with us in terms of what's coming up or what you're working on?、Um, well, actually, I, I always keep one next to me. So <laughs> oh, look at that! I'm working on this, you know, and I've been working on a bunch of these、um, smaller works on paper,、um, and then I've got some big works going on downstairs, and I have a bunch of work that's not been shown, and so. At some point、uh, later in the year,、um, usually we we have a like I'll have a solo in the November area every couple of years, yeah. And so、um, probably probably do a solo exhibition then.、Um, Donna, what you're doing with Studio E? We are also receiving、um, anyone interested in viewing Warren Dykeman's beautiful artwork at the SC Gallery. It's by appointment and.、Um, You can reach us through our website or just give us a call, and we'll be we'll be happy to set a time.、Um, we have we have、uh, hand sanitizer at the door, <laughs> and you're welcome to sit in our beautiful furniture and sit with the artwork. I know I do on a weekly basis, so hopefully we'll get more people coming through. Great, thank you so much. Thank you so much for for all your your wonderful work, and I look forward to seeing you in person as soon as possible. As soon as we we can all get released to do so. See you soon. So, see you soon. Appreciate it.